Hey everyone, Brandon here with Galloway Precision. Today we're going to go over the installation of our newest spring kit. This one is for the Taurus M856 series of revolvers. All right. uh, this is a 20% reduction in the hammer and trigger return spring. Uh, so it did an average pull weight of about 5 to 6 pounds in double and down to 2 to 3 pounds on single, which will do all that. <clears throat> After we get everything installed, we'll chug it up in the vise and do some trigger pull testing. Um, honestly, great little pistol, uh, right priced, and we've been getting asked for years to do the revolver stuff. This all leads back to uh, what we're doing for Roy Huntington over at American Handgunner with the Raging Bulls, and uh, it has turned into quite a good relationship with Taurus, and we'll be working directly with Taurus on a lot of uh, aftermarket parts now. So those of you that are into Taurus revolvers, um, every time I post one of these videos, you guys start bombarding me on revolvers. Don't worry, uh, we're getting at a minimum the spring scent, uh, if not a full sample pistol, or well revolver I should say, so that we can test the parts after the fact. So don't worry, we're starting with the 44 and the A56, but we will have springs for their entire uh, revolver lineup. Alright, so let's go over tools you're going to need. You need your bench block, you need your palmer and brass punch, you need a 1 8 inch punch, you will need a paper clip that you can cut into two pieces, you will need a flathead screwdriver. Now I realize not everybody has a brown nails uh, magnet tip kit, so if you don't have a gunsmithing screwdriver flathead like this that's made specifically for these, you will need a 1 8 inch flathead. That's what fits the cut for the screw without obviously wallowing it or gouging it out all right so we're going to open our cylinder and make sure we're unloaded we are visually and physically empty so we are ready to go ahead and pull the pistol apart so the first thing we're going to do is flip our bench block upside down we're going to remove smack the crap out of the phone in the process Now all this is is a regular compression roll pin, so it does matter which side you drive it out from, it's the same on both sides, but you need to drive that pin out so that we can get the grip off. So once you have your grip off, all right, you're going to see these three screws. All right, so before we get to those screws though, let's go ahead and cock the hammer. We're going to insert our first paper clip piece and that's going to pull the hammer strut plate and hammer spring off all at the same time so we're going to set that off to the side we're not quite ready for it yet so go ahead and take your flathead take out your big screw now the thing with revolvers is usually the back two screws are slightly smaller so you may need two different uh flatheads but just make sure they're both 1 8 inch uh, and that refers to the actual tip of the flathead because if you go bigger or smaller bigger you're gonna bugger up your side plate smaller you're gonna bugger up the screw which you can always get replacement screws but it's a lot easier if you don't have to right now we take our polymer hammer and we're gonna tap right here on the frame and you'll notice it has the side plate come off don't go prying on your side plate all revolvers no matter what make and model with the exception of h and r's and some old smiths that you pull apart from the inside drop out like this all have okay that little notch right there it goes up into a cut in the frame you knock it all back all right if you try and pry this instead of tap it out what's going to happen is it messes with the uh, the cut and it screws that piece up and so you'll get a side plate that's floppy or doesn't go back all together or by cranking on it you get it all stuck in place i've seen them like this before where people don't know what they've done and they've just buggered that all up all right so we're done with it so we're going to set it off to the side 
All right. Now, I have found the easiest way to do this without having to pull all the hammer stuff out and the trigger and transfer bar and all of that. Go ahead and cock the hammer. You'll see your little bitty hole right there. Go ahead and squeeze the trigger back as far as it'll go. It's got a little bit more to go. And then you can let the hammer up and the trigger forward and you can pull the trigger return the piece it's attached to and the trigger return spring out all at the same time. So set the revolver off to the side. We're going to start with the trigger return. And what you're going to do, you see your little ball in, just stick it on your bench block, compress that down. Now this thing's going to be stout, okay? This is one of our springs on it right now, so it's not as bad as it looks, but it's going to be stout. So if you have a vise, I suggest cut, chucking this piece in the vise. Make sure that you're not squishing your ball here. If you put it in your vise, you don't want to crush that because the rounded part goes directly into a socket on the back of the trigger. So we don't want to do that. All right, so, but if you have to, chuck it up, compress that, pull this off, and put it in your bag of goodies. Why? Because if you have to send your gun in for warranty work, it needs to be stock. We may be working directly with them right now, but it, most of this information takes a long time to matriculate through a business of that size. Um, we've already had one issue where somebody sent in a product with the Asmin in it, and they tried to blame the Asmin. Got our, our got a hold of our contact. They fixed that whole situation for us, but every manufacturer is going to be the same way, even those that have okayed aftermarket parts. Not every single tech may know that. So definitely always keep your stock parts around. So now we're going to put this back together. What we want is you see this little shelf. And it's on the uh, trigger return pin uh, holder. So we're going to take and put the flat down. And compress it all until you get to the line. Try not to cover it with your thumb like I did. So make sure you got it turned perpendicular to what you're doing so you can actually get that in there. And once you have it set, okay, you're ready to put your trigger return spring back in. But before we put everything back together, we'll set that off to the side and I will do a hammer spring now. The hammer spring is under an immense amount of pressure. So when you push this down, it holds everything in place and keeps it under tension in the proper preload. And you pull this out, don't just let go of this flat piece. You'll never find it again. Let's go ahead and compress and pull. Again, yours is going to be under a lot more tension because I've already put the spring kit in ours, tested it, test fired it, done all of that. All right, so take your hammer spring, put it with your stock trigger return spring. Now, when we go to put this back on, you'll notice one side of the seat is got some round to it and the bottom is completely flat. The bottom always goes down. So when you orient this, you wanna make sure the rounded part, the rounded side is up, flat side down, okay? So I'm gonna take our new hammer spring and go ahead and start compressing it. What I generally do is I'll pull the spring down with my right hand so I can get the plate going and once I have that in place and past the hole I'll go ahead and reinsert sorry about that my paper clip now this moved around while we were doing it okay when you go to put the hammer strut in it does not go this way all right doesn't go that way it goes this way so when we go to put this in, we'll come in from the left instead of the right. Doesn't matter which side you come from, just letting you know ahead of time. All right, so let's go ahead and put our trigger return back in. And what you're gonna do is you'll notice, it'll be hard to see in the camera, but right here, there's a little, you can probably hear me running the pin punch across it. There's a little divot, you'll see it. Line everything up. Once you get it lined up correctly, your 
trigger return will slide right into the pocket, squeeze the trigger all the way to the rear, your paper clip will come right out and return the trigger. So without pulling everything, just go ahead and keep your thumb over this so nothing comes flying out. But we're in the right spot because everything's moving, transfer bar is going up to where it touches the firing pin, hammer's cocking, everything's good. So we're ready to put our side plate back on. But before I do that, we'll show you the orientation that we want. All right, so if you go to put this in, you put it in backwards like this, all right? This is just not gonna work because of the way the pivot is. Put it in backwards. If you do manage to get it to actually caulk and work, it's going to be incredibly heavy no matter what spring you put in it because it's backwards. All right, so while it'll go for the most part, notice once we get here, it keeps wanting to pop it out and it'll work, but you're gonna be like, damn, there's that's weird. And you can see it pop out of place and pop back in place because it's hopping out of there. So, what you want to do, that's the other thing, it won't caulk correctly without it in correctly, all right? So what we want to do, now that we have it from the opposite side, we'll come in from this way, go ahead and seat everything. It's more important to start on the bottom with the flat and make sure it's lined up in its spot then you're going to push this in that's going to drop it completely and everything's good all right so now we can go ahead and put our side plate on actually let me pull pull that back off and we'll show you how to do this both ways all right so let's go ahead and put our side plate back on Usually you can just press it in, but go ahead and give it a little tap around all the edges, okay? Now I like to go ahead while I have that part off, I'll go ahead and I'll pull my cylinder out and uh, polish this up, grease it real nice. Uh, this one looks ugly because I have literally pulled it out of the box and shot it once we got the spring kit. I've not done any internal work to this thing at all. I uh, haven't polished, haven't done anything. So pull that out, go ahead and wipe off the factory gook that's in there, the goop that it comes with. Give it a nice little coat of oil and we'll put it back in. Keeping in mind that just like on the 44, it compresses the same way and can be a real pain in the butt. But it also makes it worth it to pull this part out while you've got everything apart anyway and go ahead and get it oiled up and polished and do anything else you want to it. So when you go to put this in, you'll look down in here and you'll see the divot in that plunger that your front screw goes in. That pin that's inside that screw is also uh, spring driven. So if it pops out, try not to lose it. I can hear everybody on YouTube going, well, no kidding. <laughs> now, you'll know if you've got it over tight because it will be very hard to close the cylinder. If it's really hard to close the cylinder, just pop it a little bit. You don't need to torque this thing. It only needs to be hand tight like that. So that the cylinder will swing freely. Okay. So just a little something you can do while you got it apart. All right, so we got our front screw in, so we can go ahead. Remember, we want cut down, ball forward, and the uh, triangle down. If you go this way, it's going to not seat correctly. So you can actually blind do this whole part of it with the side plate on. And that's it. It's in place. Make sure that your seat is all the way in and down. Go ahead and pull the trigger just a couple of times. Make sure that the revolve, the wheel revolves. The revolver is actually revolving. And the hammer's moving. And that when the hammer strikes the uh, transfer bar and everything, the firing pin is poking it. Okay. So 
So I can go ahead and put our last two screws back. Generally speaking, your flatter screw is going to go here. Or correction, I'm sorry, your rounder screw. And there's no rhyme or reason to this because it covers it up. But over the years of working on these things, I've noticed you get the flat screw all the way at the back. It seems to be more of a Smith thing than anything. And the rounder screw up front. We got both our screws together, or our in, I should say. We'll go ahead and put your grip back on. Make sure that the holes are lined up. I like to take my 1 8 and make sure everything's lined up. We'll go ahead and get that started. And then we'll take our 1 8 making sure that we are equidistant on both sides. That's it, guys. You're ready to go. You're ready to give her a test run. If you notice the Kydex build up, I'm working on a couple of holster prototypes too, but we'll get into that in another video. But I mean, seriously, double action, um, and we'll go in and shoot it, uh, and I'll show you just amazing how much faster it is with the lighter trigger pull. So let's get everything set up. We'll move this party over to the vise and we'll get some trigger readings. We're all tucked in the vise, got our lineman pull gauge. Let's do some averaging. There you see, double action pull weight, we come out with a five pound, 13 ounce average. Like I stated in the, in the earlier part of the video, it's gonna be between five and six pounds usually, depending on the tolerance of your gun. Keeping in mind, I've not gone through and polished anything, not shot it a whole bunch, none of that. All right, so now we'll do our 10 pull average on single action. All righty, and here we go. Oh, whoops, got ahead of myself. All right, now here we go. Now well, let's start that over. Got a bad read there. Let's try that again. All right. One. Two. Three. We're getting a couple of no pound reads, which obviously is not correct. So we'll give it one more try. Uh, but like I said, it's gonna be between two and three pounds on single action. And so there you go. An average of two pounds, 14 ounces. Uh, like I said, it's all gonna depend on the tolerances of your particular pistol, but this, this spring kit is gonna definitely drop your double action and single action pull weight to where they should be for a carry pistol. So now we're gonna move on into the blast box, and dump two cylinders, and uh, that'll be it, guys. So hold on while we move venues yet again. So we're in the armory now at the blast box. We're going to be running some Remington UMC 38 Special 130 grain full metal jacket for testing. All right, so I'll do one cylinder and double action. Dump it as fast as I can. Now I am, you guys watch these videos and you see I try to pull as fast as I can. 
I'm not going to lie, this is the fastest I've ever been able to pull a revolver with our spring kit in it. So it has impressed me quite a bit. And I'm not a huge revolver guy. I like the big caliber revolvers, 38s, 357s, don't really do much for me. But this is really starting to grow on me and be a good car gun. Uh, so let's, uh, let's pop some rounds. <laughs> Alright, so we'll do one more wheel and double because it's just so fast. I literally just dumped all those rounds that quick. Alright, so let's load back up and I'm going to be working on holsters for this thing. Compact, deluxe, do all, slab side, the whole works. Alright, so let's do one more wheel and double action as fast as we can again just to show you. As you can see, guys, it's going to really, really speed you up on the double. Uh, single action, obviously, we don't need to test fire. I mean, that's it. That's as much pressure as it takes. So that's going to wrap this one up, guys. If you got any questions, feel free to email me at tech. That's Tango Echo Charlie Hotel at GallowayPrecision.com. Be sure to follow us on social media here on YouTube. Like, comment, subscribe below. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, GunStreamer, and Vimeo. And as always, be safe, be accurate, and God bless.